Genesis 25, verse number 19, the Bible says, And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Paddan Amram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days were to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your grace. Lord, without your grace, we'd be in a mess. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd minister grace to people around here today. Lord, for that one that is struggling, for that one that is hurting, for that one that is low, for that one, Lord, that uh, is confused, I pray the grace of God would be revealed unto them and would propel them and help them. Lord, I pray for that one that may be unsaved, lost. Lord, I pray that the grace of God would open their eyes and that the sweet Holy Spirit of God would draw them to salvation even this day. Lord, I pray for that one that's in a valley, that grace would help them. I pray for that one that is on the mountaintop seeking for more from God to be able to enjoy and bask in your glory on the mountain. You'd give them grace and give them the desires of their heart. Now, Father, as we come to you, we realize that, Lord, we've been in revival all week, that our flesh is weary, that our flesh is weak. We realize that... Uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil has come against us. We realize that, Lord, in this day and age, there's a lot on people's minds and on their hearts, but we pray right now that you'd put a hedge about us. We certainly plead uh, the precious blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. Uh, and, Father, we ask that, Lord, you'd bind the powers of hell. Uh, we ask that the sweet Holy Spirit would arrest everyone's attention uh, and bring everything unto uh, a, a place where folks could focus and listen to what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and, Father, we pray that you do an eternal work around here today. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name. Help us today to be seated in heavenly places. Uh, and, Father, I pray you change lives. I pray that today, uh, 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 Lord, would impact eternity for what you do around here today. Uh, bless every true church preaching the word of God. Uh, and, Father, get glory again to your glorious name. We'll bless you and praise you. For it's in the wonderful and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from our text. I want you to notice, first of all, the calamity in verse 21. The Bible says that uh, 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 Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. We find that uh, Isaac's wife, Rebekah, could not have a child. Now, the Lord, uh, Lord knows that Every woman, when she gets married, uh, 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 deep down inside her, there is an, an urge or desire to maybe bear children uh, and to become a mama. But can I say this? Uh, it's different uh, uh, now than it was in Bible days. In Bible days, if a woman did not bear her husband children, she was looked upon as if she was cursed. You see, in Bible days, women didn't have jobs. In Bible days, women didn't have careers. In Bible days, uh, women were to be homemakers and were to be 
mothers. And here we find a situation where Rebecca cannot bear children. Uh, it's a calamity. Why is it a calamity? Because Isaac knew the promise. Abraham promised, was promised of God that his seed uh, would become a great nation. Isaac is the chosen one, and his wife cannot have children. Now, if you go look at that, he was 40 when he married her. You go down there a few verses, when after Jacob is born, you find uh, that he was uh, three score years old. What was it? He was 60 years old. She's barren for 19 years. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be a struggle. 19 years she can't have children. We see the calamity. I want you to notice this. Notice the calling on God. Look again in verse 21. And it says, And Isaac entreated or pleaded with the Lord for his wife. Look at verse 22, the last clause. Uh, uh, Rebecca, it says, And she went to inquire of the Lord. Can I help you with something? No matter what you face, uh, the answer will come from God. Uh, 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 one of the greatest tools that you have uh, as a human being is the avenue of prayer. Uh, if you're not saved today, uh, uh, you can call on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Uh, but if you're saved by the good grace of God, uh, uh, the greatest thing you can ever do uh, is grab a hold of the horns of the altar and call upon Almighty God. Uh, uh, do you realize that hell and the devil can drive you only to your knees, but when you get on your knees and begin to call upon the name above every name, uh, uh, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, do you realize heaven stops uh, and everything that heaven has is at your disposal? You know what changed their situation? It wasn't infertility drugs. It wasn't the advice of a doctor. What changed their world was prayer. Mm -hmm. Verse 21 said, And the Lord was entreated of him. God heard his prayer. Oh, hymn writer wrote, uh, uh, He heard and answered my prayer. Thanks be unto God that he hears our prayers. Uh, uh, can you imagine us? That is nobody. That is not even worthy to call on his name. Uh, not only, Brother Bob, can we call on his name, but he takes time and listens to us. Uh, and he answers our prayer. We see the calamity. We see the calling on God. But notice there's compl complications. Look at verse 22. The Bible says, And the children struggled together within her. There's complications. Now listen. Um, there's nothing more beautiful or more precious than how God chooses to form a baby in the womb, that mama carry that baby, and that baby develop in the womb for nine months and then is birthed into this world. It is truly a treasure and a gift of heaven. Now, don't get me started on people that abort them. It's not a life after it's born. God told Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Hmm? The moment of conception is when it is a person. And anybody that chooses to abort one is guilty of murder. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. It absolutely boggles my mind how somebody that is drunk can hit a car that has a pregnant woman in them and he's charged for two murders, but a doctor can abort them and it's okay. Hmm? It's precious to give birth. Can I tell you this? There's nothing more scary than when there's complications in the pregnancy. Now, we've learned a lot in science, and they do a lot of things with women that are struggling. That are, I mean, sometimes they get these uh, 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 diseases. I didn't look it all up. They get this uh, 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 situation where she can't be on her feet. She's got to lay in bed to make sure the pregnancy's okay. There's sometimes the water breaks a little bit earlier. There's other times that uh, 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 there's things going on and problems, and she's trying to give birth early and all kinds of things. Uh, that they've learned how to treat, how to slow down the pregnancy, and how to slow it down, how if they can get them to a certain point, the baby can be born and everything will be all right, and all kinds of things that used to would never have transpired. The baby would be born stillborn. But we find there's complications going on. 
And again, she begins to call on the Lord. He heard her prayer. We see the calamity, the calling of God, the complications. But notice the conflict. This is why there's a struggle going on in her womb. Look at verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. And two manners of people shall be separated from, the bow, from thy bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Can I say Jacob and Esau fought in the womb? All their lives they fought. They, Jacob was a conniver, and Esau, well, he was a hunter, really didn't care about his birthright, and they fought, and they fought, and they fought. And can I tell you, their generations are still fighting today. All that mess in the Middle East is still going on today. All them Shiites and Hittites and Parasites and all of them still fight today. Jacob come out of the womb holding on to Esau's heel. They were fighting in the womb. And they're fighting today. Can I say, until Jesus comes back literally to this earth and sits on the throne of David, there won't be peace in this earth. There's always conflicts. There's conflicts in, in, in society. There's conflicts in homes. There's conflicts in churches. There are conflicts in government. There's always conflicts. You know why? Because there's an enemy of human beings called the devil. And he's a deceiver and he's a divider. And he's always seeking to divide people's hearts so they can't focus on what the real problem is. And the real problem is sin. And the real solution for sin is the Lord. And people don't want to deal with him. What I'm interested in out of this whole text, I'm interested in verse 22. It says, And the children struggled. Can I say, in being a preacher now for going on 33 years and pastoring going on 25 years can I say something that I know about people people struggle it don't matter what class of people you may fit into don't matter your education it don't matter how much money you got in the bank it don't matter what uh, side of the tracks you live on it doesn't matter uh, 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 your race your ethnicity it doesn't matter where you come from people struggle I want to preach with God's help on this thought because there are some people who struggle and there are other people who always struggle so I'm interested on this thought this morning on why some people always seem to struggle. They always seem to struggle. Now, now don't get me wrong. From time to time, everybody's going to struggle. And you can be the greatest Christian in the world and you're still going to struggle because you're made out of flesh. And it's flesh struggles. And you live in a wicked world. And there's all kinds of things that come against you. And from time to time, we all struggle. We'll all struggle with something. But Brother Josh, it's one thing to struggle from time to time. It's another thing to always struggle. And there are some, Brother Donald, it seems like no matter who preaches, no matter who sings, uh, no matter how much they come to church, they always seem to struggle. I want to help you with something. Somewhere along the line... You ought to get some victory, right? Huh? Somewhere you ought to get some help. I don't know about anywhere else, but I know around here, as much preaching as we get around here, somewhere along the line, a light bulb ought to come on, and you ought to get some help. Now listen, people struggle over a lot of different things. Can I say there are some uh, who struggle with doubt? They just doubt all the time. They doubt whether they're saved. And if they get victory over that, then they doubt if they're in the will of God. Then they doubt if God wants them to testify, or God wants them to sing, or God wants them to do this, or God wants them. They're always living in doubt. Their life is a yo-yo. They're up, they're down, they're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. Can I say that kind of life will wear you out? There is nothing more stressful than not knowing. 
And people struggle with doubt from time to time, but there's some, Brother Bob, that always seem to doubt. They'll stand up in service. Thank God for that verse. Thank God for that message. Thank God for that song. I got some help. God help me. Two weeks later, they're back down again. Can I say this? There are some who always seem to struggle with discipleship, being Christ-like, learning about the ways of Christ and then walking therein. You see, if you've been born again, the Spirit of God indwells you, you are in the family of God. And if you are in the family of God, God ought to start showing out on you. Hmm? I have three foster children here today. And all three of them have traits of their mama and have traits of their father. Now, Sydney's going to act like Sydney, but if you're around her long enough, you're going to see some Brother Doug come out in her, especially if you get her mad. And then you're going to see some sweetness come out of her, Miss Annette. Christian, same way. Jordan, the same way. You hang around them, their parents are going to come out of them. They have their parents' traits in them, but they have also learned their parents' mannerisms. They've learned their parents' ways, uh, and it comes out of them. Uh, 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 if you know the Lord, if the Spirit of God is in you, if you spend any time at all in this book or spend any time at all praying and sitting under preaching, uh, He's going to start coming out on you. Uh, uh, you're going to become more like Him. You're going to look like Him. You're going to talk like Him. You're going to walk like Him. Uh, you're going to be like Him. Him. But yet there's some that always seem to struggle with discipleship. They never look like him. They never act like him. They never talk like him. There's a problem. They're struggling always. And I say there are some who seem to struggle with dollars. There are some people that always have money problems. Now, from time to time, everybody's going to have money problems. From time to time, you're going to have something unexpected happen. You're going to have a water heater go out or a washing machine go out. You're going to have to put tires unexpectedly on a car. Uh, you're going to have motor problems. Uh, a, a child's going to fall out of a tree and break an arm, and you didn't budget for that. I mean, from time to time, you're going to have something come up. But there are some people that are always in a poorhouse. They always are struggling. Hmm? Now listen to me. Does not the Bible say God is no respecter of persons? Brother Josh, that means God doesn't love you any more than he loves me or love me any more than he loves you and he's given us the plan and why would he bless uh, uh, you to have a candy bar and me not to have a candy bar? Well, if he's no respecter of persons, he's given the plan, then and it's, 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 it's all the same across the board. Amen. If you've got a candy bar and I don't have a candy bar, that means one of two things. Either I'm not following the plan, or God can't trust me with a candy bar. But that doesn't mean he's not going to trust me with anything. Hmm? I mean, the, the Bible says the Lord is good over all. So why does it seem like there are some who never, ever, ever get over that money hope, uh, hump? Always struggling. Always struggling. I'm not talking about sometimes. Always struggling. Hmm. Boy, it got quiet right there. I learned. You can't preach on mask. You, you can't preach on dollars. Huh? You can't preach on people's ugly youngins. People get quiet on you. Hmm? My grandma used to say this. You know, everybody believes their child's beautiful. My grandma said, she'd always say, well, nobody's got prettier grandbabies than me. She said, some of them got ugly grandbabies. That's what my grandma used to say. My grandma bought me my first Bible. Don't say anything about my grandma. Huh? Not all her babies were cute, though. Look at Brandon. Huh? Where's he? <clears throat> huh? I 
Some are always struggling. And I say this, some struggle with discernment. They don't know when God's speaking and God's not speaking. Hmm? They struggle. Listen, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. There's some that don't know his voice. You see, if you're about ready to step into the mud puddle of sin, the Holy Spirit will say, don't do it. But there's some, Brother James, that never hear that. They always just waller in it. At a service, the Holy Spirit will say, preacher gives an opportunity to testify, testify. And some will testify, and God's on it, and God blesses it, and people get help. Then somebody else said, boy, we had that Thursday night. Somebody else will testify, and somebody else will testify, and God's a blessing, and God's a moving, and God's a blessing. And then somebody who don't know the voice of God will stand up and say some of the stupidest stuff and grieve everything God just did. Now listen, nobody 100% of the time is going to nail the the voice of God, but I'm going to tell you there's some that never nail it. They just always seem to struggle. I thought about this. There are some who always seem to struggle with feeling deficient, inferior, Now listen, I already mentioned God's no respecter of persons. Now hear me and hear me well. There's nobody breathing God's air and walking on God's earth that is worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. The only thing we're worthy of is to die and go to hell. We were conceived in sin. We're sinners by birth, sinners by nature, sinners by practice. Uh, We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, There's none righteous, no, not one. We all are failures. But the grace that Brother James sang about, in that yet while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Huh? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Even though we were failures and sinners, God made a way. He sent His Son to die on the cross uh, uh, to shed His blood to be the propitiation for our sin. Uh, He was buried uh, and rose again according to the Scriptures. Uh, And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. Uh, Hey, uh, my salvation's not based on my baptism. Uh, It's not based on my church membership. Uh, It's not based on what church I attend. Uh, My salvation is based on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what He did on Calvary. uh, And when I called upon Him and asked Him to save me, He did. uh, And hallelujah, I'm saved uh, by the good grace of God. Uh, I'm not worthy to be saved, uh, but I am saved. Uh, I'm saved in spite of me uh, because God loved me in spite of my sin. Uh, And He saved me. Can I say, Brother Bob, been saved 47 years. I've never felt worthy to be saved. But the Bible says that we are a chosen priesthood, a royal generation. We are above the rudiments of this world. Uh, We have been made heirs and joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Uh, uh, The Bible calls us righteous because we've been robed in His righteousness. Uh, uh, The Bible calls us the sons of God. Uh, uh, The Bible uh, makes me worthy. And there are some people, in spite of all the Bible preaching they hear, in spite of all those verses... They always feel like second class Christians. God doesn't make such a thing. You're either saved or you're lost. And if you're saved, you're in the family. And the only way I can describe that is I have three children. They're all three distinctly different, even though she don't like to admit it, she's more like Jordan than she is Christian. There's parts of Christian in her, but she's more like Jordan times. But they're all three distinctly different. But can I say this? Me and Mama love all three of them exactly the same. They have our whole heart. We don't prefer one over the other. 
although they'll say she's daddy's girl and she gets her way with daddy. And she'll say, well, Christian's mama's boy. And Jordan says, I don't really care. <laughs> the problem with Christians are, if you're inferior, you're thinking God prefers somebody over the other. When you really get in, you're like him. We really don't care if God blesses somebody else because he's blessed me far beyond my deserving. Why do some people always seem to struggle? I just got four short points. I'll be done. They struggle with all kinds of things all the time. Why is that, preacher? Can I say, first of all, they always seem to struggle because they have a lack of faith. The Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Why do you think everything we do is predicated on the teaching and the preaching of the word of God? Because that's where faith comes from. Why do you think so many churches have gone away from preaching? Why do you think they've gone away from teaching? Why do you think they use uh, all kinds of Bible studies and all kinds of things that have nothing to do with the Bible? Because the devil doesn't want people to have faith. Do you know why the Catholic Church, up until mostly the 70s, did their services in Latin? Because they really didn't want people to know what the Bible says. Brother Donald, you was a, a very faithful Catholic man. I mean, you was an altar boy and all of it. You didn't know that the Bible teaches Jesus had other siblings. They, they were half-brothers and sisters. And the Catholic Church didn't tell you that. They said Mary was a perpetual virgin. You didn't know that the Bible teaches to pray in Jesus' name. They didn't teach you that. They taught you to pray to Mary. You didn't know that the Bible teaches that uh, 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 the, to those that forbid to marry and abstain from meats, not to give them credence, but the Bible teaches that. They don't want you to know what the Bible says because then you realize what they teach you isn't biblical. They teach you salvations in the church and in your baptism, not in the blood of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad you got to read in the Bible? Amen. Huh? You know who's going to heaven? People that believe the Bible. Huh? There are all kinds of preachers, but they don't tell you what the Bible says. And folks that always seem to struggle do not put their faith in the Bible. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six that without faith it's impossible to please God. Uh, uh, do you realize that everything we do is predicated on faith, uh, uh, believing what God said? Uh, uh, the problem with those that always struggle, uh, uh, they're looking at their inabilities uh, rather than believing and putting in their faith uh, in Jesus' omnipotence. Uh, uh, the Bible says that nothing is impossible with God. God. Hey, I just choose to believe that God will, not that He can. So many believe God can. I believe He will. Listen to me. I've worked two funerals the last two Saturdays in two different churches, and I told Miss Annette, I said, We missed the mark. I mean, you got to come in one door, go out another. You got to wear a mask. You got to take a bath and hand sanitizer. They don't have pews in those places. They had chairs, and they'd have two chairs, and then about six feet apart, they'd have three chairs, and then two chairs, and then three chairs. Uh, 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 then uh, 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 they, they don't shake hands. Uh, 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 they don't breathe on one another. Uh, 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 they're scared to death of everything. Uh, uh, listen, can I help you with something? I just believe God's bigger than anything that will come against us. Uh, the Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, hey, the Bible says, says that the church is to assemble, not be socially distant. Hey, I'm not interested in social anything. I'm interested in spiritual distance. And I want to get as close to God as I can get. They say, you're a rebel, you're a heretic, you can call me whatever you want to. I just love Jesus. 
And Brother Bob, we've been at it for, since May 14th, and for us to be the rebels and all that stuff, God sure has been good to us around here. Hmm. They always struggle because of their lack of faith. Friend, you can, you can love God but not take Him at His word and be miserable. Hmm. Those one men came to, to Jesus and asked something of him, and he says, Do you believe? He says, Yea, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. We ought to ask God to increase our faith. It's a crude analogy, but it's, it's, it's so true, and it's the best one I got. Faith is like a muscle. If you don't exercise it, if you don't stress it, if you don't strain it, if you don't push it to the limits so that it can grow back stronger, it's useless. If you have a gym membership and don't go like me, it's useless. I did go, and then COVID came, and that's the one thing I gave up. I just got out of the habit. I was going five days a week, believe it or not. I was trying to take care of what little there is to take care of. But you can be like my daughter, who's a freak in a weight room, her muscles are a lot stronger. You know why some of you struggle? You never exercise faith. Sometimes you've got to look beyond where you can see. Amen. You see, when those priests took that ark across Jordan into Canaan land, the river Jordan did not sway like the Red Sea. It wasn't until they committed their foot to it that it parted. And each step it parted a little more. And can I help you with something? Sometimes you've got to step beyond where you can see uh, and you just got to believe God and take Him at His word. Uh, some seem to always struggle because of their lack of faith. Can I say secondly, some seem to always struggle because of their lack of focus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 2 verse 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip. The problem, Jesus said, in the last days wouldn't be a, a, a famine for the preaching of the Word of God, but a famine for the hearing of the Word of God. And the writer of Hebrews says we ought to give the more earnest heed to those things which we have heard. Can I say, the just shall live by faith. The just shall walk by faith, not walk by sight. Faith cometh by hearing. Now, we heard enough preaching this week that we should have been absolutely jacked up ready to worship. But some didn't give heed to the preaching. And they're struggling today. You've got to put into action what God preaches the Lord told Moses, here are my commandments, do them. You can tote a Bible in your arm everywhere you go and say, I got the Bible, but does the Bible have you? Are you doing what the Bible says? I highly encourage you, if God don't change my heart, to come back tonight. God, don't change my heart. We're going to look at Ephesians tonight that deals a little bit with how we should live, but also deals with why we don't live that way. But I'm telling you, our problem is a focus problem. You see, back in Andy Griffith days, when everybody sat on the porch after they ate a big meal, they talked about the Lord, the goodness of God, and they looked out in the field where they'd planted some uh, 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 cabbage and some maters and some cucumbers, and they saw them coming up out of the ground and knew it was the blessings of God on their life, and they had no problem focusing on how God, good God was. They went to church, and they, they just lived their lives, uh, and life was a lot slower paced. Fast forward to now, why the Andy Griffith days are gone. We're all running at light speed everywhere we go. Our lives are a whirlwind. We live in a society that doesn't sleep, although I am missing because of COVID that restaurants close earlier. And you know, they're all, you can only get so many in there and you got to wait and then they close. I miss uh, being able to go get a cheeseburger if I want to late at night with a milkshake. Pass by the gym and wave, say, see you later, boys. 
But we're running constantly. Parents working two jobs come home, throw something in the microwave for dinner. You got to run little Johnny, little Susie to ball practice. Got to run here, run there. Then you got a crazy preacher having all these revivals. Got to go to church. Got to do this. Got to do this. And we're running so much that we're not heeding to the things of God. We're so inundated with life that we're not living. Not a victorious life. That's why the people struggle. Friend, I don't care how busy you are. You've got to find time. And usually the best time is early in the morning to read the Scriptures and pray and seek the Lord because whatever you put your mind on first thing in the morning is going to stay with you all day. Some people just struggle all the time because of lack of faith or lack of focus. Can I say this? Some people struggle because of a lack of following. The very essence of sin, the philosophy of the devil, is this. My right to my claim to myself. It's all about me. You know why there's riots in Milwaukee and Portland and other places in the world? You know why 19 or 17 people got shot in Cincinnati last night? Do you know why there's problems in all this uh, 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 Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter movement and all these movements going on? Because everybody says it's all about me. And people have a problem with authority. I don't care who you are. You're always going to answer to somebody. And one of these days, we're going to stand before the Lord. And people always struggle because they have a problem with authority. They have a problem with following. Can I say, first of all, they got a problem with following the Savior. This is what Jesus said. In Matthew 16, 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Uh-oh, it's not about you. It's not about me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 19, 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect or complete or mature, where you don't struggle... Thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give it to the poor, that thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. You know why everywhere Jesus went there was a multitude that hear his preaching, but when it was all over there was only the twelve that followed him and one of them was of the devil? Because they didn't want to give up what they had to follow him. You know, Peter and James and John were very prominent fishermen, had successful businesses, and Jesus said, come follow me. They dropped their fishing ships and everything else and followed him. Do you know Matthew was a tax collector, very prominent figure in society. Jesus walked by and said, follow me. He gave it up and followed him. And I could go on and on and on and on. Luke the physician, I could go on and on. You know why they're going to have special thrones in heaven? They followed Jesus. You know why some people struggle? They won't follow him. Matthew 10, 38 says, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth, and followeth after me is not worthy of me. You know why some of you don't have the blessings of God? Because you're not following him. You know why some of you got a dollar problem? You don't follow him. You got a faith problem. Does, does, does not the Bible say that God's a, uh, he loves a cheerful giver? Y'all thought I forgot about the money, didn't you? <laughs> Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible tells us to bring our tithes into the storehouse that his house might be full. And does he not say, prove me now if I not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you cannot contain? Does he not tell us to seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all the other things will add to you? Problem is that people got money problems, Brother Eddie. They're wanting all the things and then God, give God the leftovers. It don't work that way. That's why you're always struggling. When you learn to put God first and give him the first fruits and, and just do what God says to do, uh, hey, he blesses. But if you don't, you struggle. Brother Brian, where you at? You've not been saved real long. It does not make sense. You go down around the job working at nasty factory and work all day and work hard. You've got these grandbabies to raise. 
and you got a lovely wife to take care of, and you, you get paid a wage. When you come home, the government takes a big portion of that wage. Then what you got left, you got to do that, and you got to go get them tasty cakes that you like. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you got all that stuff you got to take care of. And you got that dog that costs you about $6,000 a week to feed. You got all that stuff. It does not make sense that God would expect you to give a tithe on what you gross, give 10% of your income when you got to take care of all this. That don't make sense. But there's something about when you give God his portion. He just blesses. Nobody goes hungry. The dog gets to eat. He even gets a bone every now and then. I mean, I know it. Everybody just gets blessed, and God gets blessed. He meets. You're wearing nice threads. You, you, got, you got a nice Harley. You got a nice truck. I mean, God's been good to you. Why? Because God says, if you just by faith give me what doesn't make sense, uh, I just look and see what I'll do for you. Uh, hey, He just has a way uh, of taking nothing and making something... Uh, and he's able to bless. Uh, hey, if the Jews didn't wear out their shoes for 40 years in the wilderness, uh, and they didn't wear out their clothes, uh, and he fed them with manna, and he fed them with quails, uh, and he'd open up a rock and pour out a river of fresh water. Uh, I mean, God knows how to take care of you and I. But if you don't follow him, you're not going to get the blessings. Hmm. Them Jews that murmured in the wilderness, he'd open up the earth and swallow them up. Mm. See, some fail to follow the Savior. Some fail to follow the shepherd. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 7, Remember them which have the rule over you. Uh-oh, we got an authority figure right here. Have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God. Well, that lets you know who's got the rule over you. Whose faith follow. He's preaching to you and giving you the word and walking by faith. You follow that guy. He goes on to say, considering the end of their conversation. He goes on to say in the same chapter, verse 17, obey them. First he said, remember them. Then he says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. You see, when you're always struggling, the preacher's not full of joy. He's saying, what in the world have I done wrong that I haven't taught them to have victory and then he has to stand up and preach with grief in his heart and that's not profitable for anybody. Hmm. But see, there are some that understand the pastor is just a man, but he's God's man. And God speaks through him to help God's people. And they say, I'm going to follow him because he knows God. And there are some that say, oh, that's just good old brother Doug. He don't, he don't, it don't matter what he says. That's why as many times as I've preached about you spending so much time on Facebook or on the computer instead of spending your time in God's book and spending your time talking with God, you get mad every time I say that. But you know what? When you stand before Jesus, you're going to wish you would have listened. So when I say, God said we're going to have revival, you say, oh, no, not another one. There's going to be a day you say, boy, I wish you had more revivals. Hmm. You see that little spot in there where he watches for your souls? You don't know how many times the preacher's up late at night trying to get something from God because he's concerned about your family. You don't know how many times he's called your name before God, asking God to do something for you because he sees you struggling. And then he'll stand up and preach and say, all right, listen to what he has to say. See, you've got a following problem. That's why you're struggling. You won't follow the Savior. You won't follow the shepherd. You won't follow the scriptures. Deuteronomy 27.10 says, Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. There's somebody that's going to go out today. You're not going to listen to the thing I said. You're not going to do anything the Bible says. And you're going to struggle. You know what God said to Jeremiah for those that wouldn't do what God said? In Jeremiah 11.8 it says, Yet they obeyed not. 
nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. You know what he's saying? He's saying there's a hard time coming your way, Jack, for not doing what God said. See, Brother Bob, they're always struggling because of lack of faith, or lack of focus, or lack of following, or lastly, a lack of forgiveness. Now hear me and hear me well. A lost person cannot live a Christian life. Amen. They'll try. But see, the flesh is weak. You can only do it so long. Can I say a saved person who's not living a Christian life is going to struggle. The Bible says in 1 John chapter number 1, verse 4, and these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. What he's about to write is so that you'll always be happy, happy, happy. You won't be struggling. And I want to tell you something. Even when you're going through problems, if you have joy in your heart, the problems don't have you. So these things write unto you that your joy may be full. Verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all brother Clint sang about that Friday night verse 6 if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth if you're saved and not living what the Bible says you can say you're saved all you want to but you're not doing what God wants you to do you're walking in darkness you got a problem that's why you're struggling he said this in verse 7 but if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. See, when you don't have a forgiveness problem, when your sin's been washed away, you're walking in the light with him. You have fellowship with him. Guess what you're not doing? Struggling. It's hard to struggle when you're walking hand in hand with Jesus. Matter of fact, it don't matter what's going on in the world. I had people in Sunday school say, do you hear about this with the president? Do you hear this, what happened over in Israel with the peace treaty? Do you hear about this going on? I know, because all this revival scene, I quit watching all that stuff. Half the time they're lying to me. So I just quit watching. I just, I'm trying to be more consumed with him instead of what's out here. So I haven't heard all that, but you know what? I sure ain't struggling. Happy, happy, happy. But he goes on to say something else. Verse number 8, he says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. How many people sit in church and deceive themselves? I'm okay with God, but you're not living by the Bible. You're not okay with God if you're not living by the Bible. And if you're not saved, you're really not okay with God. You're the enemy of God. God loves you and wants to save you, but he's not going to save you in spite of you. You've got to come to Him. goes on to say this. If we confess our sins, hallelujah, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. You see, some are always struggling because they've got a forgiveness problem. Either they're not saved and trying to act like they're saved or they're saved and they've got sin in their life. Because, friend, when your sin is forgiven and you're walking with Jesus, you won't struggle. Oh, you may hit some blips in the road and some hurdles in life, but as long as you're walking with Jesus, that's all they are, blips and hurdles. But those that are always struggling, it's always mountains. It's always, you know, something big and great and bigger than them, and they're always wanting people's attention about their problems, and they're always struggling, always struggling, always struggling. You know what your problem is? You've got a lack of faith. Lack of focus, lack of following, or lack of forgiveness. You know what the good news is? You don't have to struggle. Amen. You can get it settled today. Amen. You can come to the Lord, and He'll help you with your faith. He'll help you with your focus. He'll help you with your fellowship. And He'll help you with that forgiveness problem, because that's where it all starts. 
you're here today and you're not saved, in a minute we're going to have an invitation. That's just a big word. We're going to invite you to come. We're going to sing a song and invite you to come. If you come, we'll get somebody to take your Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved from your sin and you can walk out here a new creature in Christ. And that struggle of sin will be over. You won't have to worry about going to heaven. It'll all be taken care of. You're here today and you're saved, but you've not been following. You've got to start following the Lord. You ought to start seeking Him. You ought to start focusing on Him. And why don't you come and ask Him to help you with that? You can leave out here different. Why well, come to church and leave the same way? You ought to go out. Boy, I got some help today. Amen. You'll get help if you do business with the Lord. Can I tell you something? Uh, life is hard. Job says, Man's days are few and full of trouble. Outside those doors, it's rough. But you can overcome everything if you're walking with the Lord. Amen. And he'll help you today Amen. if you allow him to. And during the invitation, he'll bid you to come and get some help. And I'll say this about the Lord. He's a gentleman. He never forces himself on anybody. But he invites everybody to come and partake of the water of life freely. I wonder today, you tired of struggling? That can all end today if you start putting Jesus first. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. I was getting a song. Folks are coming to pray. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for being a present help in time of need. Thank you that when temptation comes, you make a way of escape. Thank you, Lord, that you can solve all the struggling. We'll just yield ourselves to thee. Lord, I pray if there's someone who's got a selfish problem today, they'll get that taken care of. They'll, they'll die out to self and let the Savior take control. Lord, I pray if there's someone who's got a forgiveness problem, they'll get it settled today. I pray if there's someone who's got a following or faith or focus problem, they'll just come and get it settled. I pray especially if there's somebody unsaved, good moral people, Lord, live you know, a good life and try to do right, but Lord, they've never given their heart and life to Jesus. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Father, I pray, Lord, for that one that just always seems to struggle, they'll get victory today. God, help folks get glory to your name. Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.